Welcome to Busted Speakers, I'm Alex. And I'm Ed. And today we're reviewing the third album by Annie, Dark Hearts. This is Annie's first album in over 10 years. Her second album, Don't Stop, coming out in 2009. But my introduction to Annie was with her 2004 album, Animal, Mm -hmm. which I don't believe you've heard, Ed. Nope. I haven't heard any previous albums by Annie. I mean, I, I caught some songs that just auto-played on Spotify afterwards that are a lot more electro-poppy compared to this. So I'm like very intrigued to go back and listen to her older stuff. But yeah, I've got no prior experience with Annie, unfortunately. Now, I'm calling her a pop legend based on just that album hmm. because I think it's quite forward-thinking electro-pop. Damn. You've got the amazing production from Royksop, and you've just got stuff that sounds like stuff that would come out in the 2010s rather than the mid-2000s. It's like not Electro Clash at all, it's not hmm. like dated at all. It, it sounds fresh and modern to this day. I think the song My Heartbeat is a bona fide classic, one of the best pop songs of the 2000s by far. Damn. Yeah, I mean, she first went on the scene with The Greatest Hit, which was a hit in 99, so she's been at it for a while. She's been in the pop game for over two decades. Yeah, I'm amazed I haven't like had much experience with her because I'm quite a big fan of Royksop's early work, which is from around the same time that they produced a bunch of songs on that debut album for Annie. And I've also heard uh, the song Songs Remind Me of You. I think that's from the second album, right? I'm not familiar with the second album, sadly. Damn. Well, that's a really good song. Like, honestly, I might be controversial to say this, but I prefer it to anything on this new album. Um, but... I don't know if that's controversial to say, because I haven't heard it. But um... <laughs> I'm sure you'll but... like it. Yeah, Yeah, I'm sure I will. So she has actually described this album as a soundtrack to a film that doesn't exist. So wait, wait, wait a second. So you're saying this album has the same core concept as Soundtracks for the Blind by Swans? <laughs> I am saying that. <laughs> Uh, that's what Annie's saying, apparently. Oh yeah, she said that. <laughs> you could say that about any album, but anyway. I guess so, yeah. Dark Hearts, it's her first album in 11 years, and it definitely sounds like an album of someone with a lot of experience in the pop game. This is definitely a mature album. Mm-hmm. It's definitely something that you'd expect from someone of her, of her prestige in the genre, Yeah, I'd say. A lot of this is quite chill, slow-paced for pop music, but occasionally there's a couple of really eclectic oddball genre hopping that happens, especially in this later part of the album. That's true, yeah. Tracks like The Bomb definitely bring in a bit of a genre left hook. So, basically, the question is, what did you think of this album? Uh, I I don't know. Despite it being, you know, quite a straightforward synth-pop album and... uh, According to Rate Your Music, most of the music I listen to is synth pop, which kind of surprises me, but um, apparently that's the case. So I guess I have enough familiarity with the genre to sort of like suss out how I feel about albums like this usually. But at first I was kind of unsure about it, and then I listened to it a second time and thought, this is pretty good. And then listened a third time, but focusing on the lyrics, and I don't know, it's kind of grown off me in my estimation a little. Oh. There's a bunch of songs here that I like a fair bit. I just think the album has some issues on the macro scale, like uh, some of the production sounds on this album, I think, didn't go far enough in terms of keeping it atmospheric. Because like you said, it's quite a slow, sort of chill pop album, which is like quite unusual for right now. Um, it is. I mean, it's synth pop just by virtue of it having a lot of synths, and it is poppy, but it's not fast-paced. Hmm. or energetic like a lot of synth pop is i mean that would be more electro pop but you know that kind of interchangeable to a certain point sometimes yeah and don't get me wrong there's like exciting moments on here but i think the bpms are usually quite slow a lot it is like slower than even mid-tempo a lot of the time which is fine a lot of 80s pop is actually like that a lot of this does feel quite nostalgic laden Definitely. I mean, this is the point I was going to make. That's like the main lyrical theme of the whole project, I'd say. It's a very, like, nostalgic sounding album in a way. I think it definitely emulates the sound of some 80s uh, pop artists. But also, I don't know, uh, in terms of tracks towards the end, like The Untold Story especially, but, you know, some earlier tracks as well have these big atmospheric moments. It reminded me a lot of Julie Cruz, if you've ever listened to her. Uh, no, I know she's the sinner who sins 
some Twin Peaks uh, tunes. That's right, yeah. But I've never actually listened to her. Well, she has an album that's produced by Angelo, who did the Twin Peaks soundtrack. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it, it kind of has that slow, almost jazzy vibe to it, but it's not really jazz influenced here. I just think um, Annie's voice and, I don't know, just the pace of some of these songs and also the sense of atmosphere. It feels like it's kind of shooting for a Julie Cruz type thing, which is like quite an interesting turn in modern pop. But I don't know, part of me just wishes a lot of the sounds on this album were taken a bit further. Yep. I feel like for, for all the good melodies on it and for all the odd, decent musical incursions that happen, I think it's quite a samey sounding record, I guess. That is true to a certain extent, I can agree with that. Like I said, it's issues I have on the macro scale. Like, um, I probably like about half the songs here a reasonable amount, but listening to the whole thing in one go and judging it as a full album, I just think there's some issues like that that I guess we'll get into, but I'm itching, well, uh, from my point of view anyway, but I'm itching to know how you feel about this one. I hope you enjoyed it like a fair bit more than me. Let me say this. This album is really good for late night listening. Hmm. Like, really good. That's the setting I recommend it in. And yes, you could say that's a sort of qualifier. That's like a certain setting you have to be in to enjoy it at its most, which shouldn't be true for music. You should be able to enjoy it in almost any setting. But to Hmm. be honest, the album cover suggests it. But there's a lot of dark tones and nocturnal vibes going through the whole thing. Like It sort of has like a nighttime drive feel to it. Like, which seems really obvious from the cover, but like it's it's yeah. really emulates that feeling in music as well. Like, not just visually. And have you done that? Have you listened to it uh, at nighttime, or was it more daytime? Can you remember? I think a bit of both. Like, I think I must have listened to it once while I was settling down uh, one evening. It, but it's really yeah. good. Like, think when you're settling down for the evening, you're not gonna want to put on some hyper pop. No, that's true. Well, unless you're planning to stay up the night, I guess. But no, this is a lot smoother and, uh, like you say, more nocturnal, uh, atmospheric. Yes. But again, I just wish it would double down on some of those elements because at times it feels like just a little bit typical in the way some of the synths sound on here and stuff like that. I mean, I didn't really have a problem with that. Yeah, you've got some pretty basic lyrical topics hmm. on here which you were saying that that wasn't a, a, a big a favorable thing for this album for you i mean there's definitely a bunch of songs that i like lyrically i think one of the best examples of how i feel about that aspect of the album is in the big single that everyone's been loving from this the streets where i belong now how did you feel about her referring to herself in the third person on this one i thought it was like an interesting and like quite cute sort of fourth wall breaking songwriting moment i guess Um, i'm so glad she did this you wouldn't know this but this actually is something she did back on chewing gum on animal oh really so it's it's a self-reference in more more ways than one then it's a identifiable quirk of hers and i swear it's not cringe like when jason (laughs) derulo shouts his name at the start of (laughs) <laughs> some of his songs. I completely agree I mean, with that for sure. <laughs> it's, it's a way better like case of putting your own name in the lyrics. Yeah. On chewing gum, she was using it more to like talk to herself hmm. at the time, but this is definitely more to talk to herself in the past as well. On the streets where I belong, like a past version of herself. It also feels like when she says Annie Annie, she's like inhabiting a character that's asking her a question rather than it being her herself asking herself a question. That's how I took it anyway. That's a cool little quirk. Like, I think the songwriting on that song is pretty interesting because it feels a little different in terms of the like narrative perspective of it or the point of view that it's sung from. But then I think this must entirely be a me problem of not really knowing anything about Annie. She tells this story in quite like vivid detail. Yeah. I can picture everything she's singing about, but I struggle to come to a conclusion on like what the story means, like thematically or any way that it like resonates with me. So while I I think it's like well written and it's definitely coming from a place of uh, her own perspective, like believably, there's just something about it that feels a little incomplete to me, and that's how I feel about a lot of elements of the album. But I do overall really like that song melodically I mean- and whatnot. If we're going to get unnecessarily deep about this track, which I guess I might do here. Yeah. Well, what 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 was your takeaway from it? Like, 
I mean, I, th- I thought it was just about her talking clearly about her formative years. Mm-hmm. I guess in Bergen, Norway, which is where she was based. And just how music can transport you back. I mean, yeah. it might sound unfinished, but I guess memories and thoughts of the past can seem unresolved or unfinished as well. That's true. It, I mean, it captures that nostalgic vibe for sure. I like how the sound of the song, and also the guitar solo at the end. I really didn't expect a fully-fledged guitar solo here. It plays into it really well. Just, I mean, I guess this is the type of pop music where it would fit in more than electro pop, mm-hmm. but the absolute, absolute best song on here for me is Corridors of Time. Nice. Yeah, I liked that one too. This really might be the very best song on the album. I love the intro, like the spoken word part and the sort of ethereal way the guitars sound. Well, the, the, those are both elements that gave me the Julie Cruz vibes, because she has kind of a, sp- right. like a soft spoken word sort of aura to some of her verses, and uh, Annie reminded me of that here. And also, yeah, the ethereal feel of it is very similar to the instrumentation you'd hear on a Julie album. Okay. The r- returning uh, hook of the song, the baby, baby. Yeah. Definitely I, another top cover from Alex there. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of, weirdly, the Stay Now, Stay Now parts from Stay Another Day by East 17. I don't even remember that song. <laughs> yeah, you might not want to, but <laughs> generally speaking, this is a good and memorable song. Mm-hmm. I think this song actually benefits her voice the most, definitely her utilises her voice in the best manner in the whole album, because her right. voice is quite breathy and uh, alluring mm. in the way she accentuates. She's got a very specific voice that, to be fair, doesn't have that much uh, uh, room to change up, but yeah. it's definitely a good voice. Yeah, I like her voice. I think sometimes she doesn't give enough power to like some of the choruses here. Sometimes she sounds a little bit one note, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, but, but when she comes in with this spoken word thing on Corridors of Time, it makes me think, wow, I wish she did this a bit more across the album, honestly. Yeah, that, 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 that's true. But the chorus is great as well. Something about the way it sounds and the whole nostalgic themes of the album makes this song that sounds hazy and half-remembered. Hmm. It's like half a memory. What a tune. Did you have any other favourites here? The sad thing is my thoughts on this are very quite positive, but <laughs> generally it's just like a set of sick tunes. <laughs> I don't see how that's sadly. Like I, I hate to be the downer, honestly. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd, well, we're talking about three favourite songs. It would be Corridors of Time, mm-hmm. Miracle Mile, which is you know, leading into Corridors of Time, one of the better songs on the album for me, Yeah, and The Bomb. Nice. I also like how... Uh, it's finally over the last track just turns into an indie pop song at the end mm. like a sunshine indie pop tune of sorts pretty much yeah uh, but did you say the title of this song as the album was ended ed ah oh, it's finally over <laughs> <laughs> no because i you know i didn't dislike it i think it's a fun listen there's just a lot of like yeah, components yeah. to a lot of the songs where i'm just going ah, i wish this was done a bit differently I spent yeah. a lot of time picturing potentially better versions of some of the sounds I was hearing and wishing that it was taken further. Was The Bomb one of your favourites? I definitely liked it. It's got like a, a very interesting change-up, like I said, for the sound of this album, because it's uh, more of a sort of breakbeat drum and bass <laughs> yeah. type song with like vocal samples of Annie saying S.O.S. Yeah, just naming the best ABBA song for a little bit at the beginning. Yeah. Then uh, just probably another one of the better songs on the album. Yeah, it's a, love the frantic beats. It's a cool. This is probably up. the outlier of the album. Definitely, yeah. But it also, it maintains like the same mastering style, the same production style as the rest. So it doesn't feel yeah. like a complete left turn. Like it's it's definitely no. like consistent to the sound of the album. And by proxy of it just being a bit more energetic, it is the closest to something that would be on Animal, even though it's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. It's definitely much more modern and break bt idm almost e almost leaning on leaning on that i mean it, it comes from that sort of scene of 90s yeah i, I would say the, the music. vocals aren't are just kind of there like they're good but they're not like it's kind of is the production instrumental that makes that song really good yeah it's kind of the opposite of the streets where i belong where like the importance of the lyrical side of it is just completely flipped around it's more more of an instrumental type track but definitely a good one any other noble tracks for you? I think this album starts really strong. I must say that. Like, In Heaven is a good yeah. opener. 
Uh, I really think that has the best vocal performance on the album for me. Like, it's the instrumental that, I guess, achieves what the album is trying to do the best for me. Like, it gave me a good idea of what what it was about from the get-go, which I guess makes it a really it, good intro. It genuinely sounds like a 80s, spacious song. Yeah. But not the ones that most people refer back to in the 80s. This is like... It, Take My Breath Away by Berlin type 80s. Yeah, it has like a bigger scope to it than your average thing, yeah. I guess. Um, like, I, I have a lot of respect for this record, but it's a little patchy <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that one, In Heaven, is a really great opener. Uh, I also think the title track has maybe my favourite melodic moment on the album, which is the pre-chorus of that song. Yeah. And, you know, uh, melodically, that song is very memorable as well. Like, um, I still think that Annie maybe doesn't give enough power to the song vocally, but it's not an unlikable performance. No, no. I think I'd have to go with Corridors of Time, same as you. Uh, <laughs> it, it is that should. Yeah, like, that's probably my favourite single from this one, uh, I'd say. And I didn't even know what songs were singles, I just love that song yeah I, I ended up checking that retroactively and i wasn't surprised to find that the singles were the streets where i belong dark hearts miracle mile corridors of time american cars and the bomb quite Damn, quite a few singles. five singles yeah. like thriller up in this bit. yeah for real which you know most of those songs pretty good uh, I'm not too keen on Miracle Mile, though, honestly. But yeah, yeah. Is it the high-pitched vocal bit? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that kind of clashes with the atmospheric elements of the album, if you get me. Like, it takes me out of it in a way. <laughs> I just don't like the way the vocals are processed. I think it's unnecessary, uh, considering she can clearly sing very well. But I, I guess they were just experimenting with uh, implementing her voice in a more instrumental way into that song. Which, you know, they make they make work really well on Corridors of Time with the part that you mentioned where she says baby repeatedly, but it sort of changes it to the specific note. It feels like there's some like manual tuning going on there to fit yeah. in with the instrumental. And then it leads into a chorus in a really effective way by bringing it back to that sort of part of the scale, I guess, melodically. So it's not like there isn't precedent on the album for like vocal manipulation being done really well and working for this sound, but yeah, Miracle Mile I don't think is a good example of that, honestly. And yeah, there are a few others I liked here. American Cars is pretty good. I think Forever 92 is a cute, nostalgic pop song uh, that, you know, is a, one of the more melodic ones here, but again, it doesn't break the atmosphere. I just wish the atmosphere was deeper for this album, I guess, is my main complaint. That's fair, especially with a, such a heavily atmospheric album. Yeah, it's like hearing the potential in it, and like what we have here isn't necessarily bad at all, but I think it could have been taken a bit further. I also think from the other Annie material I've heard, which is not much at all, I feel like her vocals are better suited to more energetic songs. I don't know if you agree with that. Well, Animal's one of the best pop albums of the... 2000s. And is that more so, sort of buzzing electro pop? That's type definitely stuff? more electro pop. Once you hear something like Chewing Gum or mm. No Easy Love or the title track, it's very evident that, you know, she could do sort of quirky electro pop songs. You know, that's kind of why she became so notable on the scene anyway. Yeah. So this is kind of a change of direction for her in general. It is, but it's like kind of expected one after all this time you know it's like because yeah. like, something that's come from a esteemed pop legend you know definitely hearkening back to thoughts and feelings and uh sounds from her past mm -hmm. some of them may be fictional but honestly i believe most of it probably is real or maybe slightly taken liberties with to fit the songs with but honestly i feel like most of it is stemming from personal experiences so i'd say I so don't know, maybe it's just something she needed to make yeah definitely no i f i think it's a very believable album i just think maybe it's not poetic enough and it just doesn't capture me it doesn't engage me lyrically all that much i'm just kind of like yeah this sound i mean the streets where i belong is the song that most encapsulates that sort of approach of yeah. looking back on obviously a, a career that started a long time ago now so yeah, I believe that she has the experience, but um, 
I I don't know. I just feel like I definitely like her more. Like I'm definitely going to try that album Animal for sure, especially on your recommendation yeah. cuz like the moments on this album that feel like they have a bit more energy to them are the bits that I am gravitating towards a bit more than the atmospheric ones. Um so knowing that her older music is a bit more like that just sounds more promising to me but i can definitely see why people are really liking this one and there's a few keeper tracks from it it is a return to form after so long yeah i mean i heard a bit of the a and r ep as well which has kind of a um new disco vibe to it as well uh i thought she sounded really good on that oh yeah yeah Like, like she hasn't been completely in the dark she has been doing lots of little things she is a dj yeah she, she's she been keeping her busy in her own way. Yeah, This just is her first full-length album, obviously. So, like, long long story short, don't, don't pay much credence to my opinion or my sort of indifference to this particular album, because I already know that I have big respect for Annie and enjoy some of her other music, so I guess I'm more excited to try that stuff. So I'm still That's thankful fair. that you brought this to my attention anyway. And how would you finish your thoughts on it, or...? I mean, yeah, I guess... It's just a bit of a mixed bag. I've said pretty much everything I feel I can say about it, because I didn't have like any strong negative feelings towards this album. I don't think there's any outright bad songs on it. There's just a few that sound a bit too samey to me, or have like a lot yeah. of minor issues in my view. But yeah, definitely some keeper tracks here. Like It's worth a listen for sure. Okay, I'm going to give it a strong, strong five. I uh, feel kind of bad about that, but... <laughs> It's just how I ended up feeling after three listens. Like I'm, I don't feel much desire to revisit this at this point, outside of a few songs. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm just glad you enjoyed it more. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven. I'd give nice. Animal maybe a eight point five. Honestly, believe it to be one of the landmark pop albums of the two thousands. Damn. Not, not that I've explored that much. Like I consider Blackout by Britney Spears to be one as well. I mean, I'm, I'm in the same boat there. That's for sure. <laughs> I know it didn't get the respect it deserved on release, but I feel like people are retroactively giving that album the credit it deserves. Yeah, I'll give this album a 7 out of 10. Nice. Definitely not her absolute best material ever, hmm. but after so long, it's just nice to hear her again in a more mature, laid-back uh, style. Like I said earlier, it's definitely one I'd recommend for late-night listening specifically. Mm -hmm. That might sound like a caveat to enjoy it more than otherwise, but honestly... When you're settling down and you just want something chill, this works. This really works. Lots of great songs on here, lots of great takeaways. Corridors of Time, one of the better songs I've heard this year, even. So that's cool. Wow. Yeah, just solid pop album and not a specifically uh, modern sounding one. Mm. You know, this could have come out 2015, 2010, maybe. I don't know. I kind of get that feel from it as well. Yeah, yeah. even from the cover art, actually. I mean, the the cover art the cover art has kind of like a BBC drama vibe to it to me, like a, a BBC drama post, radio and, drama, or a radio yeah. drama, like some big finish thing or something. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just I don't know. It feels sort of more of the 2015 that kind of era of pop music. Unused photographic stills from Nightcrawler, clearly <laughs> from Christine. <laughs> <laughs> we're yep. keeping it halloween relevant guys that's right well thanks for listening to busted speakers i've been alex he has been ed or i do so hope so <laughs> does that even make sense i, I do so hope so i so. i so much hope that i have been ed so do i we do have a facebook and twitter check them out if you want to yeah but no biggie if you don't uh yeah bye <laughs> bye <laughs>